Um, but guys, let's get straight into our equations. All right, so um, what we're having a look at today, just in case you didn't see the lesson pitch, is we're sort of starting our recap of the section. So if you are new, again, don't panic because we're sort of going to go through everything that we've spoken about so far in equations. Okay, now guys, the really important thing with equations is that if you look at something like example one, all of you could immediately tell me that X is eight. There's not really any working out that you need to do. When your equation is quite simple, especially like this one, you can look at it and you can tell me what the answer is. This is called solving by inspection, looking at it, seeing what the relationship between your values is, and then giving an answer. What we need to bear in mind is that as equations and as these questions become more and more complex, we need to start showing our working out in the correct way. And what we need to remember when it comes to equations, very, very importantly, we need to remember that we need to use opposites or what we sometimes call inverse operations. So I call it inverse operations. Um, some of your textbooks will use inverse operations or something in that sort of wheelhouse, but that is the basic number one golden rule of solving an equation. Inverse operations tells us that if we want to solve an equation, we need to use the opposite operation of what the question originally started with. So if we have a look at this first example, again, probably all of you could look at it and immediately tell me the answer, but if we are going to apply inverse operations, remember our goal is always to solve for the unknown. So our goal here is to get X alone. Now, often what will be the case is the first thing that we want to deal with is anything being added or subtracted. So first deal with what? added or subtracted to the term with x in it. I'm going to say containing the variable because remember, yes, we nine times out of 10 solve for x, but x isn't the only variable that we use. Sorry, it sounds like someone is maybe in my house, it shouldn't be, but I think we're fine. Um, containing the variable. So if we have a look at this first example, what we don't want or what we want to first deal with is this plus two. In order for us to do that, again, inverse operations, which tells us that we would actually need to subtract two on both sides. And that's not an exponent, grade eight, please remember that. I'm just gonna write this above here. We are subtracting two because positive two minus two gets rid of the two on the left-hand side. And so what we end up with on the left is just an X. But on the right hand side, we have got 10 minus two. Why minus two? Well, because I took that plus two and I made it join the constant on the right hand side. And in order to do that, I had to use an inverse operation. The inverse was the opposite of what it originally was. The opposite of positive two is negative two. And so we get our solution of X is equal to eight. So yes, very easy starting point, but again, it's not going to be this easy all the time. And so we need to understand the basics of inverse operations before we start stepping it up. So if we now have a look at something a little bit more challenging, if we look at question two, I'll make this small in a second, you, can go, you guys can screenshot the first question now, now. If we now have a look at something like question two, like Nero has put there on the chat, a good rule of thumb, is that if we keep all of our x's on the left and all of the numbers or the constants on the right, we should be okay when solving our equations. Now, again, this has to involve inverse operations. So exactly, we're going to keep the letters or put the letters on, whoopsie, on the left. So when I say the letters, I mean the variable terms or the terms with variables in it. And then we're going to put or keep our numbers on the right. And if we can do that, we should be able to solve any equation. 
let's just maybe try and fix that layered situation. So based on that statement and remembering, of course, that we have to use inverse operations, our goal, just as a reminder, is to solve for x. So I want to get that x alone. As I've said in this first example, we always want to try and deal with what's being added or subtracted first. And in this case, this is going to essentially follow or deal with putting my variables on the left and the numbers on the right. So what we want to do is we want to deal with this plus four and essentially we want to get rid of it. To do that, we have to use the inverse, which is minus four. Positive four minus four gives us zero. But if I'm going to subtract four on the left, I have to subtract four, subtract four on the right. And so we are left with six X on the left-hand side, which is exactly what we said we wanted to do. And 22 minus four on the right-hand side. Again, exactly what we said we wanted to do. If we just neaten up the right, we can very easily subtract four from 22. That gives us 18. And now again, guys, we need to go back to this inverse operations. When there is a coefficient, we need to divide it away. Now remember, coefficient is that number that sits in front of your variable. It's been multiplied with the variable. So in this case, we've got six times x. And this is now why we divide by six because it is the inverse operation. So I'm going to divide by six. Remember, on both sides of the equation, the whole purpose or the whole point of an equation is that we've got equal size and exactly like I said, what we do on the left, we have to do on the right. We have to keep it balanced. Once we do that, six divided by six is one. And so we end up with that one X that we wanted. You can write the one there if you want, you don't have to. And 18 divided by six gives us three. And so we've solved our equation. Now, remember, grade eights, there is a way to check your work. And I would always recommend, especially when it comes to the end of your test and you're sitting there and you've got like five, 10 minutes and you're just sitting there looking around the classroom. If it's an equations test, you should be checking. So your check is always to substitute in your answer. So my little red block is my check. You don't have to write this check out. We're not going to mark the check, but it's useful so that you can make sure you've done it correctly. So we use substitution. We've got six times three plus four should equal 22. Now remember the check tells us that the left-hand side must be equal to the right-hand side. Six times three is 18. So we've got 18 plus four on the left. 18 plus four is 22. And because 22 is equal to 22, we can say that our answer or our value for X is correct because I have shown that the left-hand side, LHS, is equal to the right-hand side. If you can show that, if you can prove that the left is equal to the right-hand side, you have shown that your answer for X or your value that you've solved X for is correct. And so that is what you should be doing any time that you're sitting at the end of a test and you're twiddling your thumbs, you should be checking your answers. All right, so. I'll just do that. If you want to take a screenshot, please do. If you have any questions, now is the time to ask your questions. Um, I'm just making sure there weren't any questions that I missed in the chat here. I don't think there were. Right, so Morgan, yes, we only divide when there is a number in front of our X, when we have a coefficient. If there's no coefficient and we've just got X, so like in the first one, we didn't have to divide by anything because the coefficient was one. That's exactly what we want. We want one X. So I don't have to in that case. But if there is a number, then we do need to divide it away. Okay, so guys, I'm assuming no questions because there's no hands up. So we're going to move on to the next one. Oh, there we go. Is it teeny or tiny? We should Hi, ma'am. It's tiny. Tiny. Perfect. What's up? Ma'am, I was asking, what if we get like our answer as a fraction? Okay, that's fine. Sometimes our answers are a fraction. And what I would suggest you do, especially when you do get a fraction, is to do the check. Now, this in this case, I would use a calculator. I wouldn't try and 
like do the fraction check without a calculator you don't have to show the check so just use the calculator and make sure that your left is equal to the right but a fraction is fine and you're going to find as you start to move up into grade 9 10 11 12 we're often going to have fraction answers uh, okay thank you ma'am here's ya. okay so guys really important question there fractions are fine we don't often give you fractions in grade eight, but that's not to say we can't. So it is fine, but remember to check your answers. Okay. Um, so yes, exactly, we keep the fraction. If it's, if through our check, the answer is correct, that's fine. Uh, Mamelo? Mamelo, you there? Yes, ma'am. There we go. Okay, what's your question? Yes, ma'am. So when I did an example on the side, I found the number in a decimal form. So is it correct if the number is in a decimal form? Okay, so both of these answers aren't decimals. They're whole numbers. But if when you are doing a question and you get a fraction and you convert it to a decimal, that is fine. I personally, I prefer fractions, but if you write it as a decimal, you're not going to be marked wrong. It is fine. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, pleasure. And then guys, on that, so um, Nompilo, yes, you do have to simplify the fraction. So if you get a fraction answer, let's say you get 10 over four, you have to simplify that to five over two. Simplification always has to happen. But what I'm saying here is that you don't have to convert it to a mixed number or a decimal. You can leave it as a fraction, um, but it does have to be simplified, yes. What's Melo? Hello. Hi. So, ma'am, should we use the, can we use the, the equation? Sorry, say that again. Can we use the equation? What do you mean, can we use the equation? What, which equation? The variable and the constant. So in our equation, we are having to work with your variable and your constant. We have to then use the opposite operations in order to solve for our unknown. So we are going to have to use all of them. We just have to use them correctly with the opposite operations. Okay, I'm not sure what happened. I'm pretty sure we said it Vogan. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sorry, I'm going to on the screen. Okay, so, okay, I'll sort it out now. I'll fix it. Okay, guys, I'm hoping that you have um, screenshotted. I'm going to quickly stop sharing and reshare my screen, and then we are going to have a look at another question. Please remember grade eight, so we're going to do this again. I will just remove you from this lesson if you are not going to participate, and if you're not going to keep your um, conversations appropriate. Um, if you are still struggling with the screen viewing, Yulinda has again put that message on the group. Please follow those instructions. All right, so let's have a look at, whoopsie, our third question here, where we now have a situation, um, sorry, where we now have a situation where we've got an X term on both sides of the equal sign. Now guys, there's nothing wrong with this. We do it exactly the same. So we follow the steps that we had in this question too, we put all of the x's on the left, all of the constants on the right. We just have to bear in mind that there are two x terms. So essentially what we want to do here is I want to take this 4x and I want it to join the negative 2x on the left hand side. Now remember, in order to do that, you have to use inverse or opposite operations. This initially was a plus 4x which means that to bring it over the equal sign or to make it join the negative 2x on the left, it has to become minus 4x. Because what that does is it cancels out the 4x on the right, but it reintroduces it on the left-hand side. What we also want to do is remember we want the constants or the numbers 
to be on the right hand side. So that 12 we want to bring to the right hand side. And again, to do that, I use inverse operations. It was plus 12 to bring it over the equal sign, it becomes minus. So what we have is minus 2x that stayed there on the left hand side, I didn't do anything with it, minus 4x. And now because we brought that positive 12 over to the right, we've got minus 12. So what I'm doing here, just to refresh everyone's memory, is I am putting all my x terms on the left using inverse operations or opposite operations. And I'm putting all my constants on the right. Again, oh, using inverse operations. Okay. If I look at the left, I can add and subtract those terms because they are like terms. Minus 2x minus 4x is a negative 6x. And that is equal to negative 12. And then exactly as we said earlier, guys, when you have got a coefficient, so a number in front of your x, what you want to do is you want to divide by that coefficient on both sides. Negative six divided by negative six essentially leaves you with just that one. And so we've just got x, which we're wanting to solve for. And a negative 12 divided by negative six, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 12 divided by six is two. So we get an answer of positive two for x. So be very, very careful with your signs. Um, a question like this isn't hard, but where we will go wrong is we'll make a mistake with our signs. So always double check. And remember again, once you have your answer, substitute it in and check that the left-hand side does equal the right-hand side. If it doesn't, you know you've done something wrong and you can go back and you can check things like your signs and so on. Alrighty, so if we now have, okay, let's take a beat. Any questions, take a screenshot. Any questions, otherwise I'm gonna move on to the next one. Voicemelo? So ma'am, if the number was in bracket, what should you do? Okay, so we are gonna do an example now with brackets. Um, so we need to be careful if there's something we need to multiply into our brackets, but we are gonna do, our next example does have brackets. Okay. Sabiso? Yes, ma'am. Question? Yeah, uh, yes, ma'am, I wanted to yeah. ask, what if, if can I take the two and put it on the right hand side instead of the four being on the left hand side? Because that I'm yeah. usually doing that. That's absolutely fine. So I'm just, I'm just saying always put it on the left so that it's something easy to remember. But honestly, if you put it on the right, you would have had twelve equals six x. You would have divided both sides by six, and you still get two. So it is absolutely fine. You think, ma'am? Sure. Um, Amanda? Uh, ma'am, can I ask, uh, how do you get the negative six on the left-hand side? Okay, so the negative six on the left-hand side has come from me adding the like term. So if we have a look here on the left, my pen wants to work for us. So on the left-hand side, I've got a minus 2x and a minus 4x. These are like terms, which means we can add and subtract them. So if I am already at... Okay. That's correct. If I'm already here at negative 2x and I want to subtract another 4x, that takes me to negative 6. And so that's why I end up with negative 6x. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Good. So guys, like terms, that's really, really important. Um, guys, just sorry, just a quick reminder, when your question is, well, when you've asked and answered your question, please remember to mute and to lower your hand. I'm really also trying to, to identify them and it's very difficult to identify who's talking. 
But okay, uh -huh. figure it out. Thank you. I think I think I got it. I'm not sure. I want to pronounce it Monira, but please correct me. There should be a pop up to unmute yourself. You haven't unmuted yourself. You just need to push the pop up to unmute. You're still on mute. There we go. Um, Ma'am, I wanted to ask by question three, how did you get to x equals two? Okay, so we got to x equals two because from this step over here, what we needed to do was we needed to divide both sides by the negative six. So that's what I did on both sides of my equation. And now remember, if you've got a negative 12 divided by a negative six, a negative divided by negative is a positive and 12 divided by six is two. So that gave me my answer of positive two when I divided away the coefficient. Thank you, ma'am. There we go. Atlahan? Ma'am? Yeah. Ma'am, I wanna ask ma'am, how did it get to negative two X minus four X? So remember what we wanted to do there was we wanted to take this four X term and bring it over the equal sign to join the negative two X. When positive four X moves sides on the equation or, or swaps which side it's on, the sign needs to change. So it went from a positive 4x to a negative 4x on the left. <clears throat> so, ma'am, would it have been right if I said negative 4x plus 12? I No, because where are you getting the plus 12 from? The only way you could have rewritten that whole situation is if you hadn't brought the 12 over yet. And if you had said minus 2x minus 4x plus 12 is equal to zero, and then you'd brought the 12 over. That would be the only way you could have a 12 with a minus 4x. Okay. Okay, guys, please put your questions in the chat. Unfortunately, we just don't have time to ask all the questions. So please put your questions in the chat and we will help you. I'm going to take another couple. And again, it's fine if you're putting the X terms on the right-hand side or the left, it makes no difference. Okay, it's just get you the same thing. Sinyane? Uh, no, okay. All right. So. Grade eight, please just a reminder. Obviously, I want to answer all of your questions, but unfortunately, we just don't have time to answer everyone's questions. So this is why I always tell you to put your questions in on the chat so that we can help you there and then. If you still are confused, that is when you should be raising your hands when I ask you to raise your hands. But otherwise, your questions should be going on the chat immediately. Okay. Yes. And I'll be here also to help. Exactly. All righty. So if we now have a look at question four, so <clears throat> going in terms of what now happens when we've got brackets. Here we've got two times X plus two is equal to X plus two. So again, we need to bear in mind what's happening here. And the second we have got a bracket and there's distribution, we need to deal with that. Okay, so if you think of an equation we want to essentially simplify it down to x equals. And so if simplification is really important in this process, that means we do have to distribute our two into our bracket. Now remember, distribution means multiplication. So we've got two times x, which gives us two x, and two times positive two, which gives us four. So we must distribute. If there is distribution, we must distribute before we do anything else. Once we've distributed, we can follow all of our same steps as we usually were. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this X term and I'm gonna bring it to join the two X. I'm also then going to take my positive four 
and bring it to join the positive two. So if we go to all of that with our inverse operations, the x is going to become minus x, so 2x minus x. And the positive 4, when I bring it over, is going to become negative 4, so 2 minus 4. 2x minus x, remember these are like terms, gives me 1x or just x. And 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So really important, guys, when you have brackets or when you've got distribution, we need to deal with that first before we start stressing about anything else. So just quickly on the chat, yes, other methods are fine. Okay, please remember that there's often more than one way to do it, and that's okay. If you've done it or learned it slightly differently, that's fine. Um, Don Pilo, it's, it's a tough question to answer because actually what we're doing is we're almost applying bod mass in the opposite direction. So that's why if we go back up to this very first question I said here, I say to you the first thing that we always deal with is what we add or subtract. That is not bod mass. Bod mass tells us to deal with anything that we are multiplying or dividing first. But when we're solving equations, because we're now going in the opposite direction to get back to what x was, we almost do bod mass a little bit differently. But then we get questions like this, where we actually have to do the distribution first before we start dealing with addition, subtraction, anything else. So there's a couple sort of ones like this where you need to remember that distribution has to happen first. And I suppose in that case, yes, apply your bod mass if there's distribution. But once you've distributed and done all of that stuff, essentially we do bod mass backwards. We start with what's been added or subtracted, and then we deal with what's been multiplied or divided. I know it seems quite confusing, but if you remember to distribute first and then follow all the rest of our inverse operation rules, you'll be fine. Um, Guys, I have added them. Please, let's focus. 2x minus x. If you've got two x's and you take one x away, you've got one x left. So yes, I have subtracted them correctly. No, we are not adding them. Why are we not adding them? Well, because x is positive initially. When it comes over, it must become minus. So it becomes negative. And so we've got 2x minus x. Remember your inverse operations. We are getting negative two because once again, inverse operations, this positive four is coming over to join the two, but it has to become negative. Hence it's negative four. Two minus four, negative two. Okay, so inverse operations, grade eight. So that is what you need to remember. So all of those people who have asked questions, I hope they've all been answered. Hi, ma'am. Hi. Hi. Ma'am, don't you add the four plus the two? I've just explained it. Because the four comes Explain over, it becomes negative four. And so it's two minus four. And so it's two minus four. Okay, ma'am, thanks. Sure. Always <clears throat> um, Hi, ma'am. I wanted hi. to ask. Uh, hi. So, for your. So for yeah, for your um, wouldn't by your x by your two x minus x, wouldn't there be like an invisible one? Then it would be two x minus one x. Yeah, you can. Yeah, write in for you can write in for one if you want. But it still simplifies to but one it still x simplifies to one x, x because two minus x one x minus one x. So if you want to put a one there, that's absolutely fine. But you don't have to. But yes, there is a one there if you if you would like to add it in. Um Okay, I'm hoping we all got that. Okay, guys, I like I'm not joking. You know already from last week. I will remove you. Bye bye. It was nice knowing you. Right. So if we go now to question five. So once again, 
we've got distribution here. We have to do distribution first. Now, in this case, there's a fair amount of distribution. And this is actually going to go back to what Awaiti said now. If you look at the, the, the left-hand side, let's start with the left-hand side. And what I want you guys to see here, what I want you to remember rather, is that whenever there's a minus sign in front of a bracket, remember that there is that invisible one in front of the bracket. And so what that means is this negative one needs to be distributed into this bracket. Also remember that this minus sign separates my term. So this one is a term all by itself. And then we've got the minus one times the bracket as our second term. Remember, if you go back to algebra, so like algebraic expressions, we deal with terms and terms are really, really important. And so that's why it's so important that we remember that we've got the negative one in front of the bracket that we are going to distribute. If we move over to the right hand side, this is a little easier because it's quite clear that we need to distribute the two into our bracket. So again, this is what we do first. We do the distribution. Now, because this one is a term by itself, I'm going to leave it as one for now. I'm not dealing with it just yet. I will, but not yet. The first thing I'm going to deal with is the distribution. So I've got minus one times positive three X, which gives me negative three X, and negative one times positive four, which gives me negative four. On the right-hand side, two times four X is eight X, and two times negative six is negative 12. So again, always do your distribution first, and then you can start doing your inverse operations. Okay, now guys, what I want you to notice as well, especially when there's distribution, what you're going to, going to find is that often you've got lots of terms on one or both sides of your equation. And what might be helpful is to simplify. So what you can see is that positive one and negative four are like terms on the left-hand side. So let's just neaten that up and make it one single term that I have to deal with. So if I take one and I subtract four, I end up with negative three. And then I've got the rest of my equation. So all I've done is I've added my like terms to get negative three, and I've just made it a little bit easier to work with. Rather than having three terms on the left-hand side, I now only have two that I need to worry about. You don't have to, it's not wrong if you don't, but it does just make things a little bit easier. You don't have as many things to stress about. Now we do our inverse operations. So what I want to do firstly, is I want to get this eight X to join the minus three X. Yes, if you put it on the right and you make the three, negative three X join the eight, that's fine. I'm going to stick to what I've been saying the whole time. So we want to bring that over, which means it becomes minus 8x. And then in the same vein, this negative 3 must come and join the negative 12. And because it's using inverse operations, it becomes plus 3. What we now have is minus 3x minus 8x on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we've got that minus 12 plus 3. Inverse operations. Minus 3x, so you're already at negative 3x. You now subtract another 8x. That takes you to negative 11x. And then on the right, negative 12 plus 3 is equal to negative 9. Now, this goes back to the question of, do we ever get fractions? Yes. If we now have a look here, we can clearly see that we've got a coefficient. And remember I said that we always divide away the coefficient. So I'm gonna divide by negative 11 to get X alone. But if I divide by negative 11 on the left, I must do that on the right as well. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. And so X is equal to positive nine over 11. And so guys, again, fractions are absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with fractions. We don't really like fractions, but there's nothing wrong with them. Okay, so there's a question of how did we lose the one? So if we go back up here, I'm just gonna get a different color highlighter. This one we lost through simplification. 
one minus four. So if you think you've got one and you subtract four, we end up with a negative three. So all I did was I simplified my term so that I wasn't working with more terms than I needed to be. You don't have to. It does make life a little bit easier though. So the one got lost because I simplified. So I didn't just ignore it. I said one minus four and that simplified to negative three. Again, grade eight, it is fine if you do it differently. I'm not saying that it's wrong, but if you are not getting the same answer as me, then yes, it's wrong. But if you do it differently and you're getting the same answer and you're mathematically doing things properly, that is absolutely fine. All right. Take your screenshots. If you have any questions, now is the time to raise your hand and ask. Morgan? Hi, ma'am. Hi. Can I please ask, um, by the starting of the question, you took one and brought it down. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you solve it by the starting of the question? Okay, so remember, this one right at the start, so let's grab a highlighter here. This one right in the beginning is a term all by itself. It's not having anything distributed. It's not being multiplied, divided, nothing. It's just one. And so I bring it down because I'm only going to deal with it once I've done the distribution. So you could see once I'd done these two distributions on the left and the right, that was when I added my like terms. So because that one is sitting all by itself as a single term, we will deal with it once we've done the distribution. And only then can we start adding it or subtracting it where it needs to be added or subtracted. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So, guys, that's a really important question that Morgan just asked. It's a separate term. So, deal with your distribution first and then everything else. But if it is a separate term by itself and there's no distribution, division, nothing like that, then you just leave it there until you are ready to add or subtract it once your distribution is done. Um, yes, it is a must to divide. Remember, your goal is to get X alone. So right at this step, you haven't solved for X. You've got a, lev a negative 11 X there. That's not X. You have to divide by negative 11 in order to get X alone. Um, Mange, I haven't said minus 3 minus 8 is 12. I've said minus 3X minus 8X is 11X. So those are my like terms. I've then said on the right-hand side that minus 12 plus 3 is minus 9. It's about adding like terms. So please just be careful that you are seeing and you're taking these down correctly. Plano? Ma'am? Yeah. Ma'am? Yeah? What's your yeah. question? What's your question? Don't you simplify the fraction. That is as simple as it can get. There's that nothing that can divide can into nine, 9 and 11 to, to factorize. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Yes, if you need to fact if if you need to simplify, you must, but that can't be simplified any further. Right, there was a question of, can I check it because it's fractions? Um, Yo. I would say do this on a calculator, but if we just do it very quickly, one minus three times nine over 11 plus four, there's a lot of brackets going on here, but it doesn't matter. Four times nine over 11 minus six, so one minus three times nine over 11 is 27 over 11, 27 plus four is equal to two times four times nine over 11, 36 over 11. Sorry, I'm trying to do this in my head. And then we've obviously got to do all of those multiplications and additions and all of that fun stuff. So if we say, just get a calculator here. 
if we say 27 over 11 plus 4, we get a fraction of 71 over 11. So 1 minus 71 over 11 is equal to 36 over 11 minus 6 gives us negative 30 over 11. So 2 times negative 30 over 11. 1, oh, one minus 71 over 11 on the left-hand side is negative 60 over 11. 2 times negative 30 over 11 is negative 60 over 11. The left is equal to the right. My answer is correct. So guys, this is what I'm saying now. I wouldn't do a check like I've just done it. Firstly, because you could see that even like being comfortable with fractions, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world. Just do it on a calculator quickly and make sure the left is equal to the right. All right. Let's do one more. And then, yes, guys, it is poll day today. It's not a quiz day. Um, so just remember that. Uh, let's have a look. Sorry. Right, let's have a look at the second example, well, example two, the first one. And here, guys, we've got a fraction. So what we need to remember is that inverse operation or the opposite operation of a fraction, so division, is multiplication. So if we think about this fraction, this is saying x is being divided by 4. And according to our rules of solving equations, we need to do the opposite. So we need to do the opposite of dividing by 4, which would be times in by 4. So I would times the left-hand side by 4, because that will essentially get me x alone. But I also then need to times the right-hand side by 4. And so that gives me that x is equal to 20. Now, again, you probably could have looked at that and you could have told me that x is equal to 20 through inspection. But when things start getting a bit trickier, that's when we need to be careful. Right, I'll come back to this in a second. So let's have a look at something like this example where it is a little bit harder and where it's not as easy as just looking at it and getting an answer. So again, if we think about what this is saying, this is saying 2x plus 3, that whole expression, that's why I put it in brackets, is being divided by 3. We don't want that division by 3. We want to get rid of that. So the opposite or the inverse operation is to times by 3. So I will times by 3 on the left to get rid of my fraction, but I need to do exactly the same thing on the right-hand side. There we go. On the left, remember, I got rid of the fraction by times in by 3. So I just have the 2x plus 3, but now on the right, I've multiplied 11 by 3. So I end up with 33. That has dealt with the fraction. Keep doing your inverse operations. I want to take this 3, and I want it to join the positive 33. It was plus 3, so it must be minus 3 now. So we've got 2x is equal to 33 minus 3 which we know gives us 30. And then again, we see that we've got a coefficient here. Well, let's deal with that. We don't want the coefficient. So we need to divide both sides by 2 to get x alone. And so we get that x is equal to 15. So guys, when there is a fraction, what we need to remember is that we don't want a fraction. We want x all by itself. And so we're going to have to somehow deal with that denominator. To deal with the denominator, we use multiplication because the inverse of division is multiplication. Um, okay, so just quickly, there was a question of why we times by four in this first one. There isn't a four below, so just be careful. When you say x over four times four, which is technically four over one, x times four is four x, 4 times 1 is 4. And then if you simplify this, 4 divided by 4 is 1. So you are left with an x here. That is why these 4s are cancelling. It is so that you get x all by itself. Okay, so just be careful. We're not introducing a 4 randomly. There is a reason that I'm multiplying by 4. It's to cancel the denominator. All right, I'm just going to go back here so you guys can screenshot. 